Hey everybody, thanks for watching. My name is Jay Martin, and I'm the Russian player right here. And um, this evening I was I was kind of bored, there weren't a whole lot of games on, so I thought I'd play around and I brought a Russia build with just line infantry. What I have is three militia in front, and then a bunch of line infantry. I also have six lancers, six calf. And what happened to me is, what's been happening to me a lot is I just wind up you know, I'll just take any game I can get. So I've been playing a, a lot of games against campers. And let me be specific. I'm not talking about artillery campers. The The majority of games that I play are on grassy flatlands with no artillery. And so what I get a lot of times is guys that want to camp with their light infantry um, in front of them. And I know it's got to be frustrating. I, I meet a lot of people who are just they're just happy to play a game against a non-camper. And um, so I figured I'd post this video with just a few tips of mine on how to beat a camper. And I, I think this is actually sort of an, an important milestone. It, it, one of the ways I think that you can sort of measure your skill as a Napoleon player is can you beat the camper or not? You know, a really simple one. It, it's a whole different ball game to take on somebody who's you know, willing to engage you in the middle, and then you have to, you know, think fast and everything. But kind of a basic skill you have to get is how to beat a camper. And in this particular game, this, um, I don't remember this guy's name. I didn't look it up, but, um, I mean, this guy's rated higher than I am on the game. And, and I'm not the best player in the world by any means, but, you know, for this guy just plays a lot of games where I think he stacks the odds in his favor or something. I don't, I don't know how you get up to five or six stars just by doing this but what he does do is he just sits there and he makes me run up to him and here's how I recommend you beat the camper the first thing and the most important thing and if you only take one thing from watching this video the, f the most important thing is patience patience because the camper this guy's got some Jaegers there's more Jaegers in the back but the camper by definition, is just gonna sit there. They're not gonna move. And maybe there's a distinction between a camper who, like, runs to the corner of the map and hides on the two red lines so you can't flank him. But this is the kind of just sort of sit there camper, and I think this is a far more popular, you know, species of them. And all they do is sit there, and they form their little squares, and they want to get the first shot, and, you know, you, you gotta get in there, and this guy has some calf that he can theoretically countercharge me with. Those are heavy calf too. Oh, more Jaegers popping up. So there's four. I think there's five Jaegers total. And what I what, look at my blue dots. This is me holding the space bar down. Is I'm just going to wrap around this guy, and I'm taking my time, and I'm being patient. And I know because this guy's arranged in line that if I if he doesn't move, I'm just going to get on the flank and shoot him. And if he does sort of form a circle or a square, you're, or, you know, kind of the, like the noob circle or get his units all arranged. That's actually what this guy does. But if, if he does do that, then I'm going to be able to find a weak hinge on him to attack him with. And frankly, my build here was all about the rush. I mean, I've only got line of tree. I don't have lights. I can't stand off. So, I mean, arguably, is at a pretty big disadvantage. The only, I mean, if I try to engage this guy in his terms, he's going to win. He has light infantry, I don't, and everything. And so all I did is just move my guys around. And there's two good reasons for that. The first, the one I already mentioned, is that if I do surround him, eventually I'm going to find a weak point. And then the second is somebody who doesn't move their army. And you can see he's already doing that. Like he's dispatching line infantry to face me there. He's going to dispatch infantry to face me here. And that's weakening his center. Um, uh, pardon, let me back up. The first reason um, this is good for me is I'm going to find a weak point. The weak point now is his center, right? And the second thing is that somebody who doesn't move their units is sort of demonstrating to you that they just don't know how to move their units, right? So let's assume that you're a player who moves, who moves your units. You have to be able to move your units, everybody. And um, let's pause. Um, 
so if he can't move very well and you can move better than him, then you can put your people in better position. Right about now is when the engagement starts, and it, what my plan to do, and this is another thing for new players, the reason you use, we call these a meat shield, this is a militia unit. These are the cheapest infantry units in the game. The way that the game works, or the game mechanic, is a unit, like these grenadiers here, or these jaegers here, they will automatically target the unit, the enemy unit closest to them. So what I want to do is I don't want my musketeers here to get shot, or my real line infantry. So by putting this throwaway, this is sort of a disposable unit, what I do is rush up, and anybody who's around to shoot will shoot at them instead of the units that I really care about. And the idea is to time it so that right about the time your militia engages them and dies, your real units will be in range to shoot. So that's how you use a meat shield. And meat shields are really good against campers because campers, what they want to do is have you rush them and get overwhelming firepower, you know. But if they devote, you know, every unit shooting their volley at your militia, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, so that's how meat shields work. Now, here's what's happening strategically. I have units on three sides, and I've started the engagement here. The very important thing is to keep them busy on all of those sides. Their micro sucks. That's why they're a camper. If their micro was good, they wouldn't be a camper. So what I'm going to do is start, you can see the engagement there, and I'm about to start the engagement here. Oh, look at me moving up right there. And after that, I'm going to start the engagement in the center. Now, I think you could argue in this particular game I wanted my units in the center to be a little closer. Um, I think that's very arguably true. You can watch my meat shield taking all of these shots. He's actually retreating. What a sissy. I hate campers. And you can see I'm starting my engagement on this side. And look at that. All of those bullets are going straight into my militia. Now some of them are getting, you know, I'm getting some hits on the infantry behind. That's fine. And I'm moving up my guys right here. So, pause. What I did was I surrounded him to weaken his sort of formation. And you can see how disorganized his troops are. I mean, there's just, you know, one unit of lights that's going to get... I, I'm going to win really big right here because with my units in the center are really just facing off one unit of lights, and I'm going to get good flanking fire in these two units of lights here. Um, so that's sort of his weak point. And um, all I do is run up, and I also charge Lancers at this point um, to get in there. And you can see how inactive he is. I mean, he's not doing anything. Here go more Lancers. Oh, he's actually retreating that. That's not going to help. <laughs> I mean, really, right? Now, I didn't have very good Lancer control this game. I was using um, uh, the Russian Lancers, which aren't terribly high quality. Um, but the Russian Lancers really are only good for... I guess. I mean, I guess I could have pulled that unit out, but they're really only good for one charge, and then... Um, they're dead, really. He had countercharged Cav into a, a square here that I formed, so that that Cav really didn't do anything. Um, here go more Lancers, and this this is really simple. The, the only thing that I did is I was patient, and I got my troops in a position that benefited me. Right? What the camper wants you to do is attack him into a position that benefits him. Don't do that. The camper isn't going to move. The camper is not going to move, so you have all the time in the world to move to a position that you want. And the second dominant fact is that the camper is bad. The camper can't move his units, and you can move your units. So those are the two things that you've gone for. You have tons of time, and uh, take advantage of that time. I think the reason that people lose to campers is that they just rush straight up into the camper and that's exactly what the camper wants you to do so don't do that you know take your time against the camper and he's charging more cab for here i have plenty of time to form square so it's not really a big deal i think over here he has a cab couple cab charges that actually work my units are too depleted to form square i believe uh is what happens over there but i mean it's kind of irrelevant i have a ton of ton of guys shooting at him i do have you know more cab floating around in his rear and um, and that's how you do it. You just surround them. And even if you are playing an artillery game, 
I mean, uh, well, I guess, I mean, there's a huge difference between somebody who brings, like, you know, eight units of artillery and somebody who just camps with, like, two units of artillery. Two is annoying. But don't get stressed out about the casualties you're taking from artillery. Just keep doing the right thing. Keep doing the basic thing. And you'll be fine. Take your time. Make sure you get into the position that you want. And, and don't freak out. You know, just don't freak out. And I think I had a pretty good melee counter charge there on that guy. Pretty good melee counter charge. And we're just wrapping this guy up. Uh, oh, he charges his general over there. I think that's sort of like the official end of the game. Um, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I could have distilled this into like just saying the sentence Be patient. So, be patient. Does he get me here? I think he might get me here, actually. Yep, gets me here. Oh, bummer. Should have countercharged. But I didn't. So I think maybe he'll rat that unit. And then I've got all this cav running into a square here, so... This should be fun. Should be fun. Oh! And, uh... Hey! I get an invitation to play a game, so I think I'm gonna go play that game. And I'll catch up with y'all later. Bye.